Hi guys, this is Dr. Hong. Welcome back to the channel. Now, this week's the biggest COVID vaccine news, in my opinion, is the FDA authorization of the Pfizer vaccine for age 12 to 15 adolescents. If you are a parent, you must watch this video before considering the vaccine for your children. If this is your first time here, I'm Dr. Hong. I teach full time in a U.S. pharmacy school. My goal for this channel is to connect everyone with scientific fact. So without further ado, let's go into the screen. So in this focus talk, we're going to look at the central question what parents must know before considering COVID vaccine for their adolescents. Again, a disclaimer, this video is my summary and interpretation of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice on treatment diagnosis and preventions of any diseases. And if I mention any commercial companies in my videos, I do not have affiliations with them. Let's first look at the background. So the US FDA on May 10th, just a couple days ago, they authorized the Pfizer COVID vaccine for emergency use in people age 12 and above. This includes adolescents from 12 to 15 years old. Now they can get the vaccine. So just two days later, the CDC Adversary Committee on Immunization Practice ACIP met and voted to recommend the Pfizer vaccine for age 12 to 15 years old. So in this week's focus talk, the central question is how safe is the Pfizer COVID vaccine for adolescent? And we are going to answer this central question with four sub-questions. The first one being how serious is COVID-19 among adolescents? Second, what is the efficacy of the vaccine in adolescents? What is the safety data of the vaccine in the same group of people? And lastly, what we don't know from the CDC report. Let's look at the first fact, how serious is COVID-19 among adolescents? I think many people would ask, how bad is COVID in adolescents? Now, since the pandemic began, there have been about 1.5 million cases of COVID in adolescents in the US, and they have a higher rate of symptomatic infection compared to adults, but they have a lower hospitalization rate than the adults. About 61% of the hospitalized adolescents had an underlying medical condition, and 127 adolescents have since died from the disease. There were also 3,742 cases of something we call multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children or MISC reported for people that are under 18 years old. 21% of those were adolescents. There were more serious MISC in adolescents than the younger children. Now here we are looking at a graph from the CDC that breaks down the proportion of total COVID cases by age group in the last two months between March 1st and April 30th. Now as more adults are getting vaccinated, the adolescent age between 12 to 17 years old actually are making up a greater portion of the total cases. You can see the increasing trend. And as of April, there are 9% of cases that are within this age group. Next, we are looking at an unpublished graph that compares the odds of adult getting COVID when children are going to school in person versus virtual school. Now, adults that are living in a household with children that engage in full-time in-person school, we're looking at the A panel bracket with the red uh, rectangle, actually showing an increase in odds of reporting COVID-19. That means adolescents can transmit COVID back to home from schools. So it is very important to notice that. So let's look at fact two. What is the efficacy of the vaccine in adolescents? The vaccine trial involved in adolescents was a combined phase two and three trials. They look at both the development of antibodies and how well the vaccine prevents COVID-19. And they broke the trial into four branches, actually. And there were a vaccine group and a placebo group in 8, 12 to 15 years of age. So there's a 
12 to 15 year old cohort and the same two groups is also in the 16 to 25 year old cohort so they're trying to compare the uh, different amount of antibody development and side effects among these uh, younger uh, people and the older group and in terms of the dosing the adolescent received the same two doses and three weeks apart regimen as the adult and the placebo group received saline injection. Everyone received at least one month of follow-up and 4.3% of the participants received more than three months follow-up uh, in the data Pfizer presented. First, there were more antibodies generated in age 12 to 15 year old than in the older population cohort, the 16 to 25 year old. So that is very good news. And out of 1,110 participants in the placebo group in the 12 to 15 year old cohort, there were 16 reported cases of COVID after the second dose of the saline. And in comparison, in the vaccine group, there were no cases reported after the second dose. So the vaccine has a 100% efficacy after the second dose in adolescent. But the thing to note is that during the trial, there were no severe cases even in the placebo group as well. So it works pretty well. What about the safety data of the vaccine in adolescents? Here we are looking at a table breakdown of common vaccine side effects after the second dose and there are a higher rate of common vaccine side effects in the vaccine group such as injection site pain, fever, fatigue, headache, chills, muscle and joint pain and look at it compared to the placebo group they are much higher. And in terms of other adverse events, there are more vaccine related swollen lymph nodes uh, linking to the vaccine group, but all cases of these swollen lymph nodes are resolved within one week of starting. There was also a small number of mental illness report in the vaccine group and the FDA and the CDC both took a very deep look to ensure the use of antidepressant medications don't make depression or suicide ideation worse in vaccinated adolescents and after their intense review they do not find it that there is a link between psychological events and the vaccines. And very importantly, no deaths were reported after the vaccine. So the CDC report was very comprehensive, but there's still something we don't know and let's look at it. The indication for the Pfizer vaccine in adolescents is very similar to for adults. It is important to know that the vaccine is not for anyone with anaphylaxis to components of the COVID vaccine or to the first dose itself. But the question are what about children with a history of anaphylaxis to other substance? And what about children that need to carry EpiPens to treat these anaphylaxis? Are they safe to take these vaccines? The CDC was not very explicit to bring out that message. Now, although there were no anaphylaxis reactions reported in the trial, on the other hand, I still could not find other related information to this topic. So the take home message for this week in terms of arguing to get the adolescents to get vaccinated is that they do carry the risk to bring COVID from school to home if they go to school in person. And the Pfizer COVID vaccine for age 12 to 15 year old, uh, based on the trial data, it is safe and effective. And it's 100% effective in preventing the disease after one week of the second dose administration. And mostly it is associated with common vaccine side effects such as headache, fever, fatigue, muscle joint pain. And Pfizer is actually going to follow up all participants for up to two years to, to look at some of the long-term safety data. Currently, there are no anaphylactic reaction reported in the trials in the age group. However, it is unsure the exact safety for children that carry 
EpiPens that have a history of anaphylaxis for other substances. So this is something to be noted, and parents need to consult their family physicians regarding the risk. And to learn more, here is the link to the ACIP presentation slides that they were given on May 12. There are actually multiple presentation files that are very graphical and user-friendly. You can check it out, and I got all of my information for this video from the CDC website and their presentation slides. And the link is in the description box down below. So I've been doing COVID video for a whole year now. As we are heading to a brighter future, I'll be expanding my talk and scientific talk into other areas of science fact and public health topic. So if you want to know more, continue to be connected with scientific fact and as well as following my ongoing COVID-19 update video, uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, hit like for this video and this channel need your help to reach more people. And lastly, again, stay safe and healthy. Bye.